What up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing top logical sort as well as one of its applications to a coding interview type problem. So let's look at this graph. Now what is a top logical sort? Well, basically it's a way to list our vertices such that um, if we have an arrow going from vertex A to vertex B, then vertex A appears in our ordering before vertex B. So what is a valid top logical sort for this um, graph? Well, a valid um, topological sort would be 5, then 4, then 2, then 0, then 3, then 1. And an invalid one would be 5, 4, um, 0, 1, 3, 2. So let's look at the valid one first. Now, why is this one valid? The reason is because for every vertex in our graph, for example, 5 and vertex 2, 5 points to vertex 2. Therefore, vertex 2 must appear later in our ordering than vertex 5. So that's good. Now, vertex 0 is pointed to by vertex 5 and vertex 4. Therefore, 5 and 4 must appear before 0. And that's good as well. Now, vertex 3 is pointed to by vertex 2. Therefore, 2 must appear before 3 in our ordering. 2 does appear before 3. We're good. <laughs> now, uh, the last one, 4 and 3 point to vertex 1. Therefore, they must appear before we can have vertex 1 in our list. So vertex 1 is also good. Now, why is this second ordering bad? Well, um, there are a lot of reasons, but let's look at vertex 1. So vertex 4 and 3 point to 1. Therefore, they must appear in our list before the vertex 1. However, in this list, vertex 3 appears after 1. So therefore, this is not a topological, topological sort. And um, another vertex. So let's look at vertex 3. So 3 is pointed to by vertex 2. Therefore, in our list, 2 must appear before 3. However, in reality, 2 appears after 3. Therefore, this ordering is bad, very invalid. So um, hopefully you guys get the idea. Basically, for every single edge pointing from a vertex A to a vertex B, um, vertex A must appear in our list before vertex B. Now you might be wondering how can we apply this to a actual coding problem? Well, um, there are many real um, examples. Oh my god, I'm so bad with paint. But imagine as if instead of numbers, these vertices were classes. For example, calculus 1, calculus 2, and I don't know, calculus 3. So let's look at this um, subgraph right here. Say this was calc 1. I'm sorry for not having a tablet, by the way. Say this is calc 1, this is calc 2, and this is calc 3. So this graph could represent a prerequisite tree. Um, in other words, because calc 1 points to calc 3 and calc 2 points to calc 3, then it means you must take calculus 1 and calculus 2 before you can sign up for calculus 3. So if we have a graph of all the courses we can take and the prerequisite classes, which would be represented by arrows, then doing a topological sort would give us a valid ordering for the order in which we can take these classes. And actually, um, this type of problem is very common in on LeetCode. Um, actually, there's a problem called exactly, exactly called course scheduling, and we will be going over that problem. So, hey guys, Matt here. Um, I actually realized I forgot to talk about how to actually implement topological sort, which is pretty important. So you can either use breadth first search or depth first search. Um, right now I'm going to use depth first search, which utilizes the stack. So the idea is whenever you've met all the prerequisites for a vertex, then you add it to the stack. So right off the bat, because there are no arrows pointing to four and five, we can add them to our stack. And now we basically just pop off the stack and we add that vertex to our final ordering. So we're going to be constructing our topological sorted order right here. And now that we've popped off four, it unlocks more vertices that we can add to our stack. Now, because we've added five to our list, it means that uh, we can basically disregard this arrow and this arrow as well. And now every single time you add something to your final list, you basically check all the vertices that it points to and see if you can add any more to your uh, stack. So because five pointed to two 
and we now have five in our final list, we can add the vertex two to our stack. Uh, can we add anything else? Uh, no, we can't add zero because we still haven't added four to our final list. But basically now we pop off number two, we add it to our final list, and what is 2.2? Two points to three. That means we can disregard this prerequisite. And let me actually erase these as well. So now that we have two in our list, it means that the arrow pointing to three um, is pretty much gone now. So now that three has no more arrows pointing to it, we can add three to our stack. Can we add anything else? No. Now let's pop three off, add it to our list. And now we've met the pre now we've completed one of the prerequisites for number one. So we can erase this arrow. Now, um, have we unlocked anything else? Uh, nope, not yet. So now we go back to our good old stack and we can pop four off, add it to our list. And now we can pretend as if these prerequisites were gone. And now we've unlocked two more things. And uh, you might be thinking, oh, we can just add them to our list. But following the actual implementation algorithm, we should just add them to our stack. And now we pop them off from our stack and we add them to our list. And um, this right here is actually a valid ordering, a valid topological sorted order of the graph that we had. So again, once you've met the requirements for a certain vertex, you add it to the stack. Then you pop something off the stack and you look at all the edges that it um, has, and then you can remove those edges um, because you've now added that vertex to your final list. So hopefully you understood that, and um, now we're going to be looking at the leak code problem for this lesson. So thank you. Hey guys, so now we're finally at the leak code problem where we can apply topological sort. So uh, feel free to take a minute or two to pause the video and read over this problem. Uh, specifically, make sure you understand how this input prerequisites works because it's a little bit confusing. But basically, this problem gives us an integer, which is how many courses we have to take. And then it gives us a 2D array, which represents um, basically a list of pairs where each pair tells us um, the prerequisite courses. So for example, if we have the pair 0, 1, it means that we have to take course 1 before we can take course 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this prerequisites list into a sort of um, abstract representation of our graph. So um, how do we turn this prerequisites list into a graph? Well, um, if we have the pair 0, 1, like right here, then it means that we should have an arrow pointing from number one to number zero. And actually all we have to do in this problem is we just need to record how many arrows are pointing to each class. So we really don't care what the arrows are from the starting vertex, but we care how many arrows each ending vertex has. So let's get started. We're going to have an array called in degree um, num courses dot length. And we're going to iterate over the prerequisites. And then, um, so again, the indexing is kind of weird, but basically we're going to do, I'll just type it, then talk about it. So what we're doing here is prerequisites I0. We really don't care about what the prerequisite actually is, but we care about um, which course has a prerequisite. So for every course that has a prerequisite, we're going to increment its value in our um, array in degree. All right, and now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to construct our stack, which we're going to use for BFS, oh, sorry. Um, so I actually like using a linked list for a stack, but there are other implementations. But basically we're going to be pushing and popping on uh, the end of this linked list. So if you recall earlier in our example, we first added every single vertex that we already that had no prerequisites. So that's exactly we're going to, what we're going to be doing here. If so, if in degree of i equals zero, then we can add it to our stack. 
Alright, and now we can begin our main loop. So, um, while the stack is not empty, we're going to pop something off. And now we're going to look at what we popped off, and we're going to check off all of the edges. Remember earlier we were erasing the edges. Basically, we're going to update our list in degree. So, um, after we've popped off this course, we've, we're essentially adding it to our final topological sorted list, which means that we've completed some of the prerequisites for our other classes. So now we're going to iterate through our in degree. Oh, actually, sorry, we're going to iterate over the prerequisites array, which is our input. And again, the indexing is kind of weird, so... So what we're doing here is basically we're iterating over the prerequisites, and if the course we just popped off is a prerequisite, then we can update the corresponding vertices. And now remember, the key is if we've met all the requirements for a certain vertex, then we can add it to our stack. So right here, if um, this value is now 0, then we can add it to our stack. All right, and that's pretty much the meat of our loop. Uh, but you might be wondering, so we're doing all this pushing and popping. How do we actually, where do we actually record the list of vertices? Well, the answer is that this question only asks you yes or no, if it is possible for you to finish all courses. In other words, this, cor this problem is asking, is it possible to do a topological sort? So all we need is a counter right here where we record the number of courses that we've added to our final list. So we all we have to do is increment this counter. And it really doesn't matter the order in which we added the courses, it just matters that we were able to add the courses. So at the end we're going to return count equals the number of courses they wanted. If um, the stack becomes empty and we haven't added all the courses, it means it's just not possible for you to take every single course. So this code looks pretty good. Um, hope hey guys, so I just fixed my code. I actually made a few typos. For example, right here, I called this visited instead of in degree. But um, the idea is correct. So hopefully this works now. And um, sorry, I'm really tired. But let me just run through this one last time. So we create this array to store how many prerequisites each vertex has. We iterate through our input in order to find out how many prerequisites each um, vertex has and we update it. Then we create our stack. Then we add our initial vertices which have no prerequisites onto our stack. And then while our stack is not empty we're going to pop off and then we're going to update our um, in degree array where because we've now added a course to our list we can get rid of, uh, we've essentially fulfilled that prerequisite. So the number of courses we still have to take before we can take course I has gone down. And that's why, uh, that's exactly what we're decrementing here. And then if the number of prerequisites for a specific course has reached zero, we can push that course onto the stack. And finally, if we were able to complete the topological sort, then it means that yes, you're able to take every single course. So now we're going to submit, and um, there we go. So you might be wondering, wow, faster than 30%, why is that like seemingly kind of bad? And the reality is topological sort is pretty complicated. There are also other ways you can solve this problem, and there are a lot of optimizations you can make. But overall, um, hopefully you can see the general idea of how you can apply topological sort to a variety of LeetCode problems. So thank you for watching. Uh, please give me a like and subscribe if you learned something, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.